With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour One. So... That was that, huh? <laughs> Welcome. The phone number, 877-973-7425. That's the phone number. You can also follow me on social media. You want the links, text Eric, E-R-I-C-K, to 33777. I am a fallible person. I don't always get it right. And inevitably, uh, there is a group of people who hang on to everything I've said that they consider wrong and throw it back in my face. I wish they would be able to throw back in my face what happened last night. But before Herschel Walker was even an official candidate, I told you guys what was going to happen. And it happened. There was too much baggage. A buddy of mine pointed that out in a Facebook thread. Uh, I got a buddy down in Albany, Georgia, Steve, who was replying to someone, uh, pointing out I said all of these things, and that guy uh, insisted I was a shill. I, you know, people tell me I'm a shill all the time. The MAGA types tell me I'm a shill for the establishment. Uh, the establishment types tell me I'm a shill for MAGA. The left tells me I'm a shill for the Christ of fascists. Love that word. I just sit here in my home office and make him drinking my coffee, eating my oatmeal, telling you what I think about things, having run campaigns and paid attention to the headlines, uh, usually without input from anyone else. They all wish I would call them and ask them. I'm just telling you what I think. You can feel free to disagree. And occasionally I get it wrong. I really did think the GOP would have a blowout in November. Most of you did too, and pretty much all the Democrats did too. They were even acting like it. They were throwing each other in the bus in the week before the election. They knew what was coming, and it didn't come. But on the Walker matter, you can say he was a good candidate. You, you, you're entitled to your opinion. But as I tell people all the time, when I ran them for office, I would tell them all the time, know when you're in the minority, even when you think you are right. And this was one of those cases. Um, so this person who thinks I'm a shill in this Facebook thread, and I don't know who it was, but a friend of mine chimed in because he knows him, um, says uh, Herschel is deeply flawed because mental health issues in, in the past, which he overcame and wrote a book about. Question mark. Allegedly paid for an abortion over a decade ago. He denied it, of course. But in the world of politics, mud gets thrown and rarely are any paths perfect when a magnifying glass comes in. It's the nature of the game. Herschel won easily in the primaries because he's a known commodity, a public figure for decades. I realize many of the Georgia GOP want to blame Trump or hurt him if they think there's an opening, but Herschel would have easily won the nomination with or without Trump's endorsement. Herschel has carried a great message and likable energy. I know several that have campaigned with him for an extensive period of time. They've connected on a personal level. They tell me it went in from business calling him a friend. And goes on to say he's a fantastic candidate, a great candidate. I don't understand why people say he's not a good candidate for repeating what they hear from the media. Um, there are many of you who love Herschel Walker. But you need to take the blinders off and try to understand what other people saw. And that was kind of the problem all along. I have met with him. I've had breakfast with him and his wife. I read that Politico story today that his uh, wife insisted the campaign focus on the black community because they were going to get at least 50% of that vote. Uh, I was warned before I met her uh, that she would ask me about that. And if I disagreed, expect an argument. I, 
I, I, I can't, I, I don't know. I honestly, I, I don't know how to relate to the people who think he was a great candidate because the candidates who have that much baggage never are. And I suspect there is a level of inexperience for those who have never run political campaigns. And, and you just assume, well, you know what? People do believe the media attacks. I mean, that's one thing going into this. You have to understand that people do believe the media attacks. And there was a lot to attack him for, and they had a lot of video of it, including his ex-wife. And you can say it's not fair that they put the video up of her and not of Herschel in the same Nightline interview talking about the mental health challenges. No, life's not fair. The Democrats didn't have to be fair. They didn't have to explain their attacks to you. They just attack, and they expect the GOP to respond, and Herschel Walker never responded. Until it was too late, that attack ran for two months before Herschel Walker mounted any sort of response. Yes, he didn't have a lot of money. That is true. You know, the Atlanta media, if those of you from the AJC are listening, the Atlanta media beat up Herschel Walker and Brian Kemp for not campaigning together before the election. In fact, there are some Herschel Walker people who are critical of Brian Kemp, for not touring the state of Georgia with Herschel Walker before the general election. There was a problem neither side wanted to talk about. And I'm kind of surprised the people at the AJC couldn't figure it out. I suspect it was a willful ignorance that they didn't want to know the answer, even though they could have reported the answer, and it would have been an interesting story. You see, Brian Kemp, a lot of his campaign was covered by a state leadership committee. That leadership committee could not fund the Herschel Walker effort. So if Herschel Walker went on the bus tour with Brian Kemp, Herschel Walker's campaign would have had to cover the part of the cost. They didn't have the money. And so instead, there were media stories in Atlanta that Herschel Walker's campaign and Brian Kemp's campaign weren't campaigning together. And the media, the AJC, tried to turn it into a big story when if they were very honest, they could have reported it had to do with money. Walker didn't have the money to cover the costs. But instead, they wanted to pretend there was a rift. There was never a rift. There was a money gap. And in the pri- in the uh, runoff, Brian Kemp handed his campaign team over to Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell put in $18 million in the runoff. The National Republican Senatorial Committee only put in $500,000. Mitch McConnell put in $18 million. Brian Kemp put in his ground game. He started touring the state with Herschel Walker. He could after he won. Uh, they restructured everything into a federal pack. It was They were able to run with Herschel Walker around the state. And he came way closer than most of the Republicans, even on his campaign team, thought would win. Most of the Republicans closest to Herschel Walker were expecting him to be blown out by, Herschel, by Raphael Warnock privately. None of them expected him to win. They can tell you whatever they want in public. I know they didn't expect to win. Their surprise was how close it was. And that was Brian Kemp's ground game organization. Told you all before, in fact, if you look, it's not a surprise that every county in which Brian Kemp overperformed, Herschel Walker last night overperformed. Why? Because the Kemp ground game were in those counties pulling Herschel Herschel Walker as close as they could to the finish line. But I'm sorry, y'all. When you have a candidate who says some of the things Herschel Walker says, you who love him can give him a pass. But most people don't love him. And I guess it's part of this is an inability of people to relate to other people, to see the world through their eyes anymore. Because I know several people who were diehard fans of Herschel Walker, love him. But I know very many more who thought he's not qualified to be in the Senate. And in fact, if you look at a lot of the Republicans in the suburban metro Atlanta area, they did not go back to the runoff. They decided, well, we'll vote for him. Maybe they voted for him. I assume they voted for him. 203,000 didn't vote for him at all. But uh, there were a lot of people who refused to go vote in the runoff. I know a lot of people who refused to go vote in the runoff. They didn't like Walker. They didn't like Warnock. They weren't going to go waste their time. They didn't do performance stunts where they waited for an hour, got in, looked at the ballot, and rushed to CNN to say, I couldn't vote. No, they just didn't go vote. They knew the options beforehand. They didn't need to grandstand about it. You're not going to hear from them, but there were plenty. 
Now, this business about Trump, Donald Trump couldn't fix Herschel Walker. Donald Trump really didn't spend a lot of money to help Herschel Walker, but he couldn't have fixed Herschel Walker. This was a candidate quality matter. The people who loved him as a football star saw him on the stage and realized, eh, got issues. And again, some of you don't see it, and I, I can't explain it to you. If you don't see it, I can't explain it to you. But most people saw what I saw. Very nice guy, had no business being on a campaign stage. The man had multiple personality disorder. Yes, he has struggled and he has overcome, but he also held a gun to his wife's head. And he had a son who's a loose cannon on social media. The moment the poll shifted, threw him under the bus and attacked, 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 attacked. You know, I was uh, concerned his son was going to be a liability for other reasons. He's uh, very open in his lifestyle in Miami, and I suspected that would turn off evangelical voters. Nope, instead uh, turned off mainstream Republicans when he kept attacking his father as a wife beater, uh, abuser, screwed up man. You know, men in the metro Atlanta area who were Republicans didn't want to go vote for him because they thought he was a bad dad. Again, some of you don't see it, but you're in the minority and you might as well rec recognize it and maybe stop thinking you should be the ones to pick the candidates. Donald Trump couldn't have fixed that. Donald Trump could not have fixed Herschel Walker's problems. But there's a Trump angle here, and it's one you have to acknowledge even if you don't want to. We know for certain one bajillion thousand trillion percent. Herschel Walker would have never run in this race except for Donald Trump convincing him to. Herschel Walker would have never been a candidate for the U.S. Senate had Donald Trump not pushed him into the race. If you recall early on, he had thought about it and dismissed it. And then the Trump campaign pressure built, and he decided to get in and thought Trump would have his back. He got in. Trump never had his back. And the candidate, under the weight of his own flaws, collapsed. You had the state's agriculture commissioner. You had a Navy SEAL. You had a builder who started black voters for Trump. You had a former state representative in the state of Georgia. All of them were his rivals. None of them could stand up to the money Herschel Walker got from Trump supporters and Herschel Walker's name ID. He was the celebrity. And time and time again, whether it's Pennsylvania with Dr. Oz or Georgia with Herschel Walker, the Republican celebrity fell flat with everyone else. Now, if you want a real encapsulation of this, every Republican who ran statewide won. Every single one of them won, except one. If you add up all the votes cast for Congress between Republicans and Democrats in the state, the Republicans got more votes statewide than the Democrats for the combined congressional vote. The Republicans got more votes statewide than the Democrats for the combined state Senate vote. The Republicans got more votes statewide for, than the Democrats in the combined state House vote. The Republicans held and or won a handful of suburban districts they expected to lose. The only Republican who lost statewide was Herschel Walker. The only candidate explicitly endorsed by Donald Trump to win was State Senator Burt Jones, who's now the lieutenant governor-elect. Every other Trump-endorsed candidate lost in the primary except Walker, and Walker lost in the general. And Burt Jones had a massive cash advantage compared to both his Republican primary opponent and his Democratic opponent. Burt Jones, however, got a lower percentage of the vote than any of the other Republicans who won statewide except Herschel Walker. In other words, every single candidate in Georgia that Donald Trump endorsed lost except one, and that one underperformed every other Republican in the state, except Herschel Walker. Georgia's got 16 electoral college votes in 2024. By the way, evangelical women, most of them set out yesterday. Women overall went decisively for Raphael Warnock. Many of you in the future will call this program and say, well, Erickson, you got this wrong or that wrong. 
I want it in the record now that before Herschel Walker even declared himself a candidate, I told you exactly what would happen, and I told you exactly what the attacks would be, and I told you exactly how the attacks would come, and I told you exactly how the attacks would be deployed, and in every bit of it, I was right. I wish I wasn't, but I was. And everybody could see this coming, except for the most ardent and committed people who now might need to reassess how they themselves look at candidates and maybe do it differently next time. A friend of mine and I were discussing bowl and branch sheets the other night when he was sitting on the front porch with me and he didn't believe that they got softer and softer every time you wash them. His wife was not convinced at all. She figured it was all marketing hype. Now she wants bowl and branch sheets for all of their beds at home. Why? Because they really do get softer every time you wash them. They're free of toxins, pesticides, harsh chemicals at every step of the process. They're the finest 100% organic cotton on earth. They're made by artisans who earn the pay and the respect they deserve. And right now you can bring home a better night's sleep this holiday season with Bowl and Branch bedding. Their signature sheets even come wrapped and ready in a beautiful holiday gift box. It's going to look good. It's going to feel great. For a limited time, get 20% off your first set of sheets and free shipping when you use promo code Eric at BowlandBranch.com. That's BowlandBranch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, Branch.com. Promo code is Eric, E-R-I-C-K at BowlandBranch.com. So it's kind of a big deal here in the state of Georgia. The Georgia Bulldogs are undefeated. I went to the SEC championship game against LSU, and it went exactly as I expected it to go, much as I knew this runoff was going to wind up like it went. Uh, and I left at halftime. I mean, it was such. A, it was going to be such a blowout. It was pretty obvious uh, it was going to be a blowout, and um, so I left. A lot of other people did as well, but it's a very big deal that Georgia is, um, and they're on track to be national champs again. And so I've got to point out, look at Auburn. Auburn fired Harson, their coach, because he just wasn't up to snuff. They had a bad year. LSU, I still don't think Brian Phillips is a good fill, uh, fit for that team, but they're going to hold on to him since they were Western champs. But let's just take Georgia. If you had a losing season every season since Kirby Smart started the job, would you keep Kirby Smart? If you hired Kirby Smart, who's the coach of the University of Georgia, National, reigning national champs in college football. If instead he lost every single season, would they keep him? Top tier football school, would they keep him? If you lost every single season. Now let's say you had a football season where you were expected to be number one. And you went in and you lost. Would they keep him? Why then are the Republicans going to keep Rona McDaniel, the chair of the RNC? If this were, if the Republican Party were a football team, a baseball team, a soccer team, a hockey team, uh, if it was competent, they would not take the second longest serving chair of the party who has never had a winning season while there and renew her contract. She oversaw the losses in 2018, the losses in 2020, the losses in the 2021 runoff, the losses in 2022, and now the losses in the runoff of 2022. And she and the RNC are trying to take credit for some sort of ground operation in Georgia, which wasn't theirs to take. That was Brian Kemp's ground game and Mitch McConnell's $18 million. She had nothing to do with it. How are you going to renew this woman's contract no chair of the Republican Party since it started in 1856 has a worse win-loss record than Rona McDaniel. How are you, the members of the RNC, do you go back to 1856 when the Republican Party was formed, not a single chair of that party has ever lost as many cycles as Rona McDaniel? 
And you're going to renew her? And you Republicans in Georgia, you're going to renew David Schaefer? You, you want to promote David Schaefer? I mean, you lost the presidency in 2020 in Georgia. You lost the runoffs. You lost 2022. You, you lost, the, I mean, really? Schaefer tried to find primary opponents to all the statewide Republicans. They've now marginalized him. They've cut off the fundraising for the state GOP. You really want to continue down this road? Really? Wow. Let's pause and just talk about what's going on in the country for a moment. We got sky-high inflation. We got runaway government spending. Trust in Washington is completely eroded. When government is this dysfunctional, you got to change the course of the country. You know you have to. That's why I'm excited about the work Americans for Prosperity is doing. They're focused on policy solutions that actually improve people's lives, unlike so many in D.C. who just want to play political football and have power. Americans for Prosperity doesn't just come up with solutions. They act on those solutions. They have the largest network of community activists in the country. They are out there every day talking to millions of their fellow Americans. If you're interested in seeing how you can get started with Americans for Prosperity in your community, visit americansforprosperity.org slash Eric today. That's americansforprosperity.org slash Eric, E-R-I-C-K. Hello there, it is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. Should you want to be on the program? I I, I got a, oh, uh, I don't know, because I know it can come across as insulting, and I don't mean it to be insulting. Can I Can I start this way? Can I, can I say, I really don't mean this to be insulting in any way, shape, or form. I, I really genuinely don't. I, I, I try to be empathetic to people. In fact, sometimes I get called a moderate just because I try to uh, see both sides of it and, and at least see the world through the eyes of the people I disagree with. And I, I can disagree with them, but I want to be able to fairly explain the way they see the world. And I sometimes get attacked for that. But I, I just think, you know, one of the remarkable things about the last 40 years is the pro-life movement has been far better able to explain the pro-choice arguments than the pro-abortion crowd has been able to explain the pro-life arguments. Pro-lifers, honestly and sincerely, can tell you why someone believes in abortion rights without disparaging them. Someone who is pro-choice, pro-abortion, uh, immediately jumps to, well, those pro-lifers just want to control women's bodies and, and things like that. They, they have a hard time explaining, honestly, why pro-lifers are that way. I try to understand, but since I... And again, I don't mean this disparagingly. I truly don't. I don't understand the people who look at Herschel Walker and say, this is a good candidate. I I, I simply don't. I, I can't understand. Well, so-and-so knows him and likes him and says he's a great guy. Yeah, but how does it translate on the campaign stage? And I, I guess my ultimate conclusion on this is that there are people who, driven by their passions, become so passionate about their own side that they can't see the world any other way. So I will say something that probably is more of a career ender for me than anything I've ever said about any politician, including Donald Trump. I, it actually is one of those things I hesitate to say because I, I know what could happen. Now I'm debating now that I've started it. Should I even say this? Because I know what's going to happen. So I apologize. Just let me talk, people. Don't cancel me for this. I genuinely and truly understand why the University of Georgia's quarterback Stetson Bennett is a Heisman nominee. He's a walk-on to the University of Georgia and has led them to college football glory. I get it. But when I watch him play, 
I think he's kind of the weak link on the team. I I, I don't I don't want to I don't want to offend you. I look I totally get it. He's surrounded by world class college athletes. Kirby Smart has done a great job, particularly putting at the center a quarterback who doesn't seem to have a big ego. And so he's not jockeying for everyone else's is money and, and, and attention and stuff like that, which is really good. But as far as quarterbacking goes, I, I, I've, he doesn't seem to me to be the strongest quarterback in college football, even as the team around him is the best. I understand totally why he's the Heisman nominee. I don't know that he'll get it, but I, I marvel at someone who can be a walk-on to a college football team of that caliber and become the starting quarterback. I do. I do get that. And I understand he can do something I cannot do. But when I look at him versus other quarterbacks in college football, I don't necessarily think he's the best. I often think he sometimes hesitates more to throw. And I suspect that um, given what I read and what I hear in, in the sports publications of the world, he will have a brilliant career, probably selling insurance for Northwestern Mutual or something like that and make a lot of money at it, but not necessarily will go to the NFL. In the same way, I saw Tim Tebow as a fantastic college quarterback, but he truly did not seem to have what it took in the NFL. Um, and it's I can see why people like him. I understand. I admire the hell out of the guy. He is deeply talented, and I don't want you to think I'm, I'm casting this person as talent. I'm not. A walk-on to the University of Georgia, now Heisman nominee who got his team to uh, the, the college football championships. I, I just, yes. But I see the other side of it, too. And this this with Herschel, I I can't process the other side of it. And it, it's so, it is a, it's, I, I actually, I find it great, difficult to, to, thing to do because I'm normally pretty good at seeing the other side of things, even as it, like, I understand why people really like Donald Trump a ton. I totally get why, even though he's not my cup of tea, I don't hate him. Some people I know truly hate him. I don't hate him. I, he's just not my cup of tea. I don't think he's a stronger candidate. Uh, I, I, and I really don't like some of the personality traits that other people embrace, but I totally get why they do. I always had a hard time on the Herschel Walker one, not because I don't think he's a nice guy. He's a very nice guy. He's a good Christian guy. He is a repentant sinner who has had a hard life, who has struggled to rebuild himself, and he had a hell of a story to tell. I get that. But I spent some time with him. And I know the baggage. And I know he was living in Texas and moved back just for this race and will probably move back to Texas. And I just, like, there was a story to tell. He had the potential there for something. But I just, I mean, I I don't, I'm, tr again, I'm trying not to be disparaging. I'm, I don't understand the people who are mad at me and think I'm shilling for never Trump establishment or some such just because I could tell you he wasn't a good candidate and I can tell you why he wasn't a good candidate. And when I've asked the people who were adamant about what an awesome candidate he was, it was a lot of aspirational statements, but there wasn't a lot of substance. It was an emotion there wasn't a reason. It was a because he's one of us sort of thing, because he's Herschel Walker who won the Heisman Trophy, because he's a nice guy. You may hate Raphael Warnock a lot, but his ads were designed to make him look like a nice guy, and whether you believe it or not, they worked. I just, I struggle to relate to this one. And again, I don't mean it disparagingly. I try very hard to see the other side of an argument, at least so I can understand it and combat it. And this one, I, I'm just, I, I go back to these comments I, I found on Facebook and others and got tagged in a few of them. People were mad at me that I didn't do enough to encourage people to go out and vote. I, I somehow am to blame. And I just, I, I, I don't, I don't understand the people who saw, and I hope they realize now that clearly he lost and so he wasn't. And also there is this issue of every non-Trump Republican candidate in Georgia won. So maybe it wasn't that 2020 was stolen. Maybe it actually was that Donald Trump wasn't a good candidate. 
Or if not, and it was stolen, then only Donald Trump and Trumpian style candidates who he brings into the race can have the races stolen from them because you're left with that ultimately at the end of the day. Uh, if 2020 was stolen and 2022 was only stolen from the Trump team, then the only people who elections can be stolen from are the Trump team. And you might want to then conclude that maybe they're not the smartest people at stopping the steal. Or the election wasn't stolen and people in Georgia have actually turned on Trump. They haven't turned on Republicans, though. Republicans got a majority of the vote in the state statewide races, with the exception of Herschel Walker's race. Every statewide race in Georgia, the Republicans won except for Walker. When you add up all the votes cast for Republicans and Democrats in each race in the state, Republicans got more votes all the way down the line. So there's got there's got to be something going on there. And I'm I have a hard time relating. I, I have a hard time struggling with that way. This it just it 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 fascinates me the dichotomy there. The the strength and adamacy of the strength of a candidate who could not win. And the diehard insistence that he was the best we could do. There was a Navy SEAL. My primary preference was for Latham Sadler. I thought he had the most compelling biography. A man who joined the Navy SEALs after having backpacked through Afghanistan, teaching himself the language. Uh, after 9-11, joined the SEALs, came home, started and raised his family and takes care of his brother who has Down syndrome. That was a hell of a bio. He's a very nice guy. Uh, Gary Black was in the race as well. The insurance or the ag commissioner for the state of Georgia had repeatedly won statewide in the state of Georgia, had an entire grassroots network. There was Kelvin King, who he and his wife are phenomenal people. He started Black Voters for Trump. She, in her own right, um, I mean, Kelvin, if you're listening, I'm sorry. Your wife, I, I mean, you married up, dude. So did I. Your wife is awesome. So are you. Don't get me wrong. They're both awesome. But, man, they are wonderful people. He started Black Voters for Trump. He's a self-made man. A hell of a biography. Josh Clark, who was in the state legislature, knew how to run wet races. I mean, heck, he's got so many people in his family, they single-handedly probably could have carried him across the finish line. Great, great family there. Um, and then here we were. Six years now, uh, Warnock has. I will tell you, Kemp has four more years in the state of Georgia. And when he is out of office in 2026, John Ossoff will be up for election in the United States Senate. And that seems like a logical place for Kemp to move. We will see. Uh, we will see. But I just, I, I do want to note here at the end for the people saying, well, Georgia is a very purple swingy state. It's really not. When you take Trump out of the equation, it's not that much of a swingy state. It's a pretty solidly Republican state. Okay, I've got to move on to other stuff. I'm doing a, a disservice to everybody else who's not fascinated by this race like I am. Uh, when we come back, I got to talk about this new story out about the left has sent children into despair. It really actually is troubling. I want to spend some time with it in the next hour um, because... I'm deeply bothered, but you should be bothered by it as well. But there are a couple of extra uh, side points in there we need to make. Before I move on, though, I got to tell you about Americans for Prosperity is one of the groups that came in and did their best to get Walker across the finish line. They train conservatives in how to be better conservative activists. They train conservatives in how to be more engaged in conserving conservatism and getting wins. They are not a think tank in Washington that trades white papers. They actually go out into the states and build up an army of activists and teach you to be a better activist. And I'm delighted to be a partner with them. I'm delighted to be on their board of advisors. They're just super people. Uh, if you want to be a part of them, go to americansforprosperity.org slash Eric. Americansforprosperity.org slash E-R-I-C-K. My name you can learn how to become a better activist going to your school board, making a presentation, going to your state capitol, talking to your legislators, getting the facts and the knowledge to be smarter than everybody else around you when it comes to these sorts of things. And also learn how to run for office, learn how to get other people elected, learn how to build your own farm team. AFP does all of that and so much more. They're a great grassroots organization. Americansforprosperity.org slash E-R-I-C-K.
Welcome. You should be a subscriber to my email. Um, you can by texting data to 33777. You get 15% off. Now, uh, if you are a paid subscriber, you have received a link and information on how to get a pretty substantial discount for the gathering in 2023. We've reached out to Mike Pence and Glenn Youngkin and Ron DeSantis and Brian Kemp and so many more to see if they will come. Nikki Haley, Mike Pompeo, so many more. I uh, want to get them to Atlanta in August of 2023 to be on stage, to have conversations about the future of the GOP and the conservative movement, all the future leaders of the party, the standard bearers of the party, looking to the future of the party. Uh, I would love to have you with me if you text data. Now, here's where the math works out for you. So the ticket price for advanced tickets is 150 bucks. It's going to go up to 250 over time next year. Right now it's 150. If you're a paid subscriber, a year subscription is 70 bucks. And the ticket for the paid subscribers right now is 75 bucks. So you get a ticket that costs $150 for $145. And if you text data to 33777, you can subscribe with 15% off. So you're actually getting the ticket for even less ultimately. So it works out fantastic for you if you're a paid subscriber. Uh, and also you get my daily stack of stuff. You get the special podcast interviews we do. You get everything. All the free stuff, all the paid stuff, the ad-free a link to the podcast, and you're going to get the ticket to the re- to the gathering. Uh, you know, it used to be the Red State Gathering, then it was the Resurgent Gathering. Now it's just the gathering. Uh, it's a gathering of conservatives in Atlanta. I don't want it to be about me, so I'm not calling it Eric Erickson's Gathering or anything like that. Just the gathering. I always, I always So the way this started is back in 2008, when I was editing Red State, uh, I was running redstate.com, and I put up a piece and said, who would like to get together in Atlanta? just to have a beer together in person. We've been doing this online since 2004. Well, about a thousand people said, I'll do it. And I was like, well, doggone it. So Caleb Howell, who was my right hand at Red State that time, had a background in event planning and started putting together this event in Atlanta, Uh, did a masterful job of it. And we got together and it was like four or 500 people wound up being there. And then there were some people who were running for office who had never run for office before. One of them, interestingly enough, was Liz Cheney, uh, but also Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz, uh, Pat Toomey, and uh, several others. They they showed up. They were running for office, Toomey for the Senate, Cruz and, and Rubio for the Senate. Nikki Haley was there. She was running for governor of uh, of South Carolina at the time. That's when we became really good friends. Had them all on stage there. And now it's kind of cool. The only one of these people I don't really know is Ron DeSantis. Or, and I actually, you know, I don't know Glenn Youngkin either. But we're reaching out to him and, and to Tim Scott and to Tom Cotton and to Ted Cruz and to uh, Josh Hawley. And we're going to try to get as many of them as, there as possible. The format's very simple. You sit on stage with me and you have a conversation, not a filibuster, but a conversation for 30 minutes. And in that conversation, I take your questions and weave them into the conversation so that they're actually talking about the things you deeply care about. It's what I want to do, and I want you to be a part of it. If you text the word DATA to 33777, just click through the link. If you're a paid subscriber and you can follow that link, you get a discount to pay, uh, you'll see the link. Otherwise, you can just do the general uh, early advance ticket, uh, and it'll be in Atlanta, Georgia, August 17th through the 20th. We'll send out a discounted hotel link later for the Grand Hyatt in Buckhead, where it's going to be. It'll be a lot of fun, uh, and I'll get to see you guys in person, uh, not just those of you in Atlanta, but whether you're listening uh, in Orlando or Jacksonville or Tulsa, Oklahoma, or Dayton, Ohio, or Portland, Oregon, or Tucson, Arizona, or Southern Pines, North Carolina, uh, anywhere. I've just got to tell you, I would love to see you in Atlanta with me This coming August, where we talk about the future of the party, the direction of the country, the new ideas and the old ideas we blend together to fight for freedom, to fight for free people, to fight for free markets, text DATA to 33777, get a ticket, 
come hang out with us in person. I'm a big believer of breaking bread in person. Oh, and that reminds me, uh, in about an hour, I'll be sending out my cinnamon roll recipe. Those of you on the re- recipe list, I'll be sending out that cinnamon roll recipe everybody's been asking me for since I made it the other day. So uh, when we come back, we need to talk about the despair among the youth of America. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.